Hello everybody and welcome to the new studio, new office of Some Geek Talks About and I'm your geek for this show. My name's Henry Steams, everybody how do you do? I hope you're all well because I'm well and I want you to be well. Uh, there might be a few changes, just a little bit maybe, but um, yeah, this is the new studio for the time being. Anyhow, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's so great to be back. I've been so excited to do this video because... We're going to talk about James Bond again, and I love talking about James Bond. I am too much of a Bond geek at times, I swear. But, you know what? One thing I'm also a massive fan of is What Ifs. And uh, the thing about What Ifs is that you, you can just go on and on and on about them, but there's one What If in the whole of the Bond series that really, really intrigues me. And that is this. What would have the Bond series been like if George Lazerby carried on in the series? It's I've always been intrigued by that. I always have. How many films we have done, how well they've done, what the reaction might have been in comparison to, you know, Roger Moore being in them. Because it would have been mostly his tenure that would have been very drastically different. Now, we're going to go into my idea of things, but I want to set some ground rules of this what if. And we'll start off just with a quick bit of history. For those who don't know, George Lazenby replaced Sean Connery originally to be the new James Bond, did one film, left. I won't go into too much detail about it, but there was, you know, there's a great documentary called Becoming Bond where you know George Lazenby talks about his experience, and there's more to that. I thoroughly recommend that if you're a Bond fan. But a quick synopsis is he wanted to be James Bond in real life, not play him. Slash, he finally played James Bond and he was happy just to move on, okay? The, the, we'll just leave it at that, the PG version for now. And, um, you know, with that as well, he was offered a hell of a sum of money to carry on doing James Bond for seven Bond films contract. And with that as well, but the clause was that the producers sort of owned him. They could decide how he looked, how he basically walked, where he just basically controlled him and he just walked away from that. But let's just... Um, so that's just a bit of history to set up, okay, where the series has and where we're going to alter it is with this special contract, we're going to say that George Lazenby signed it and then he went on. That's where we're going to start off this what if tangent timeline. The next couple of rules I have about my what if is the rest of the films that followed, whether it's cast, story, action sequences, look, the directors, they also remain the same. Um, where all we're changing is instead of it being, should we say, Sean Connery or Roger Moore, it's going to be George Lazen in the role. Okay, so with that as well, let's also get started. Now, my quick thoughts on George Lazenby is he is the underrated Bond. Granted, if you line him up compared to the other actors that played Bond, he is the you know the worst actor of all all of them. To be fair, he wasn't originally an actor to probably start off with, but I imagine he will get better and better as the films progress, as we will talk about. Because obviously the next film in the series is Dimes Are Forever, the you know one after on a Magic Secret Service, where Bond stops Blofeld with a giant laser in the sky run by diamonds and just very Americanized Bond. That, that you know, I'm not gonna go into too much deep my review of the of the Bond film series. That's gonna come later in the year. And um, I think if George Lazenby carried on with that, I don't think the story would have changed in the sense that they would have made the central focus of Bond going out for revenge against Blofeld. Um, I think they would have settled that in the first, you know, the pre-titles again like they did, because the film stays the same, and then they just carried on. But this is what I'm going to say right now. I know some people were liking George Lazenby at the time. I think Dimes Are Forever, if it had George Lazenby in, would have been a considerable better movie than what we did get in the cinema overall. Because, look, I love Sean Connery, always defend everything he does nearly, but you could tell in that film he was bored, and he was like, Ugh. He didn't really care about the character. George Lazenby, I think, still would have cared and really put a lot of heart and soul. And even with a different actor playing Blofeld, you know from the previous film, this is the guy who really killed his wife. There would have been a lot more emotional resonance to it and a lot more sort of side to that, which I think would have been a lot more interesting. And even though it wouldn't have been mentioned, it would be subtext and it would be there. That would have made the story, I think, even better. And so, yeah, I think Diamonds Ever would have been a much more successful film, even, the, even more than it was, if it had um, George Lazerby in. And I think his reviews, again, people, much more people would be going, yeah, this guy's this guy's looking good. I like this guy. You know, I was a bit non-sure about him on a Secret Service. It was a very different Bond film compared to 
the gold thing is you only live twice. But I'm I'm really liking him. He's um he's getting a lot better. Okay, now that would obviously his first few films. Now we go on to his potential third film, which would have been Live and Let Die. Now. Some of you might be screaming to me through the screen, like, ooh, would this been his Goldfinger, his Skyfall, his Spy Who Loved Me? Um, with this, you know, some people feel like the third films in the series are the best of each actor. Uh, I'm going to say right off the bat, I don't think so here. I think Live and Let Die would have been, would have done roughly about equal the same amount um, that it did if it had George Lazenby in it. I think it would have still been a massive success. I think George Lazenby here, which I'll put an asterisk in now, would be starting to really show off his portrayal of Bond, which I'll get that into a minute. But I think maybe the film might be even gone a bit darker than it actually did, because Roger Moore, he lightened it up a, a fair bit with his style of things. But I think with George Lazenby's Bond, it would have kept a mu maybe a bit more of a, even a harder edge, if that's even hard to leave for Living That Die. But let's go back to that comment I said about making his own Bond. Um, I... George Lazenby was cast basically said copy Sean Connery don't make it your own just copy Sean Connery and that was one of the bones of contention and I think George Lazenby if you look at his Bond he was trying to do what Daniel Craig was trying to do show the more human side of Bond um, very and a very patriotic Bond actually weird enough when you think about it as well and I think he would have shy he would have slightly it would have been slightly altered because the producers are in clever people and they were seeing okay these are George's strengths do that I think they would have started not writing it Sean Connery Bond for George and Diamonds Forever, but in Live and Let Die, they would have firmly made, okay, these are his strengths, let's throw this into the mix. And we would start reading Live and Let Die seeing his version of Bond, a more human, a more, uh, you know, keep on the patriotic side. And I think actually as well, a very cocky Bond. You know, George Lazenby is, was a, is still probably a bit of a very cocky man, and that would have really shone through in his Bond, I think, a lot more. Um, he would have been known as the cocky Bond. <laughs> That's how I put it. And I think his womanising ways, he really would have been a much more bed them as much as you possibly can Bond. Um, but yeah, I think that would have been so far in his, his like three successful Bond films. But then we get on to The Man with the Golden Gun. I think, again, this will be um, George Lazenby's fourth film. And I honestly, right at the bat, look, when it comes to Malin Gone Gun, it is near the bottom of my list. The word camp does come to mind. You know, even though it has some great elements in, I would have loved seeing, you know, George Lazenby, even a tall man himself, versus Sir Christopher Lee as Scaramanga would have been great. But I think this film would be considered like his weak point, you know, like this would be his quantum of solace, this would be his die another day, um, you know, sort of film. It wouldn't it wouldn't have done so well. I think the reviews would have been exactly the same. And, you know, those articles about has the film series lost its golden touch? Have they been, you know, battering a dead horse and all that stuff? And, you know, it would have been a, it would have been the down point still of George Lazenby's tenure as James Bond. Um, and it's no, it wouldn't have been his fault. A bit like with Roger Moore, it would have been because of the an eventual breakup of Albert R. Cubby Broccoli and Harry Saltzman. Again, won't go into too much detail, but basically after the Man of the Golden Gun, Albert R. Broccoli became the sole producer of the James Bond series. And this is where I think a lot of news reports be going, is the series just better left dead? You know, is um, George Lazenby leaving as well? What's going to happen? There's so much confusion up in the air. And I imagine at this point in my mind like George might be thinking you know what I want to do other things can I get out of my contract now I've done some really good I want to move on and they'll obviously say no you'll sign on to do this and eventually there'll been a lot of touring and throwing and there would have been a deal where George was allowed to get out of his seventh film contract with his fifth film but it would be his last he will keep you know he'll stay on because he is a very popular bond at this point um and stuff and people would you know he would carry on but with the intention that okay yeah but this will be my last because right now i really do believe people would be really loving george Lacey. they'd be like going you know what sean was the best no maybe george yeah but sean was like this yeah but george has this side of things that's really good it really would have been like how it was roger moore a real balance between the two which one do you prefer so yeah, um, we go on to what I think would have been George Lazenby's last film in the series, The Spy Who Loved Me. I want to again, right now say here, you're seeing it on the screen, I apologise for my very quick Photoshop. Um, 
I try to do these amazing news, these amazing fan arts these people do online, and they obviously they put their names on the posters because they're really fantastic. But I couldn't find one for George Lace to be Spy Who Loved Me. And um, I think, honestly, this is where I think George Lazenby would have actually ended on the ultimate high, like we're hoping Daniel Craig does with No Time to Die. I think Spy Love Me, again, would have been considered his ultimate best. Um, It would have been been the ultimate one to end on. It would have done, I think, just as well as what the film did. And people would be hailing it as, what a way to go out, your best film ever, you know, that's leaving the series and you know you've said you the series is saved you've left it in an amazing split space for someone new to come in thank you george lazenby i you know and all that stuff and i think that's how he would have left and people would look back on following him saying yeah you know we're a bit concerned about when sean got replaced um you know you can't beat the original but you know george lazenby really stepped up to the plate and did this amazing thing with it and um you know, when the series was in trouble, he kept it kept it afloat. So I think that would have been the credit given to him. And you would have had five films um, by George Lazenby's Bond. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat. If you're going to ask who would have replaced um, George Lazenby at that point, I have absolutely no idea. That's such a massive rabbit hole. We're not going to go down there on this video because we're nearing 12 uh, minutes. But everybody, that's how I think the series would have looked like if George Lazenby carried on. But I want to know everybody... What do you think? Do you think I'm right? Do you think I'm wrong? Please like and comment down below and don't forget to subscribe and tell me what your thoughts are. Do you want George Lazenby to stay on? Are you glad he only did one? Everybody, my name's Henry Stevens. This has been Sun Geek Talks About. Goodbye.